So one of the big challenges that a video producer has is getting their content from their camera to where it needs to go in the next level of distribution, the post-production. So Jim Jachetta of Vidovation had a solution when the NHL came up uh, to the him with the problem they had. How do they tell when a puck has crossed the goal? So Jim, exactly. why don't you tell us about your solution? Well, uh, one of the big challenges in any kind of communication is, is the first mile or the last mile. How do we get our video content on the network or off the network. In the case of the NHL, how do we get the video content from inside a goal where no wires or cabling, power uh, is available? How do we get it from the goal back to Toronto for officiating, for instant replay or for goal verification? So uh, with the engineers at the NHL and the engineers from Vidovation, we developed this in-net goal camera, as we call it, and it's a battery-powered camera. It's, it snaps into the goal. The camera's down in the bottom right here, uh, 720p60. Uh, out the top is a, a 60 gigahertz uh, millimeter wave uh, radio wave. Uh, it's like microwave. Uh, this implementation, Vidovation is the first vendor to broadly distribute uh, uncompressed HDSDI over 60 gigs. So it's the first implementation of wireless video over 60. And one of the important things from an operator standpoint, no license required, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, other frequencies uh, uh, require licensing, in, and in most cases you want to stay away from unlicensed bands because uh, the Wi-Fi bands, the 2.4 gig and the 5 gigs, because they're unlicensed, there's a lot of congestion, a lot of bandwidth const constraints and reliability issues. What makes 60 gigahertz different, it is unlicensed like those other bands, but it uses a very narrow beam, and that gives you isolation. So it, it's not susceptible to interference, nor will it cause interference into other systems. So it was win-win for the NHL. We won't interfere with any of their uh, VoIP phone systems, their telemetry, their Wi-Fi. Uh, we're on our own separate frequency on 60 gig using the goal cam. And, uh, you know, it is very narrow, narrow beam, which is great until this thing gets knocked just a little bit. Have you had issues with that as far as, you know, that goal moves around quite a bit well, during play? That, that, that's, uh, I, I, we, I can tell you're a hockey fan, so <laughs> uh, uh, any hockey fan would know that uh, a hockey play is not dead unless the, the goal completely comes off its pins. Those, those, uh, the goal is held in place with these rubber pins, and they're about six or eight inches long, and the goal can tip up, and as long as it's on the pin still, uh, the play is still alive and it can move up, down, a little left, a little right and as long as it's on the pin the play continues. So our camera had to handle, our narrow beam had to handle you know about 10 degrees of shake, rattle and roll while the play is in action. So on this case we have a bit wider beam instead of like a four or five degree beam we have a 20 degree beam so we went from a six foot target area to like a 35 foot target area so it allows for that shake rattle and roll as you know uh, 300 pound uh, seven foot four uh, um, uh, Zidane uh, Chara comes smashing into the goal or or whatnot uh, uh, we can still catch the play so. And, and so it seems uh, this is a great application for this technology because it's, you know, a line of sight. You're not going to get rain fade or anything right. like that. And, uh, and it has a very uh, practical use for the NHL. I'd Absolutely. imagine that it's really improved their um, ability to, uh, to keep games fair, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. The, the, the case in officiating and replay has become very important in a lot of different sports. Soccer uh, uh, has a goal line technology that they've been trying this last World Cup uh, as soon as recently as last year and this year um, Major League Baseball is rolling out uh, they're using a, a, a beta uh, replay system this year for Major League Baseball but hockey it's not the referees fault there, there's four of them on the ice they're not always in the right spot to make the call uh, there could be the, the, the goalie could be obstructing it. Uh, they have overhead cameras. Uh, replay looks at the broadcast feed as well. But they needed something that could kind of look under the goalie. You know, the goalie's over the. Uh, so our camera goes back in the goal. It's got a little bit of a different angle to it, more close-up angle, and it, it, it saves some critical calls. And One of the other applications, of course, for this, uh, for 60 gigahertz wireless, and I think this is where, kind of where you cut your teeth is, is kind of high bandwidth transfers, uh, you know, kind of from that 
those f spots where you didn't have bandwidth, right? Right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, bandwidth is, is, is a good question, a, a good point. Uh, uh, the other wireless type systems that I mentioned, 2.4 gig, 5 gig, they only have like a 20 megahertz band channel to play with. This has a 7 gigahertz band, and uncompressed high definition video needs 1.5 gigabits. So 1.5 gig fits into 7 gig, uncompressed, because the broadcaster doesn't want to put a compressed video signal on, you know so it would be like I got my 720p 60 70 inch monitor at home and then the replay video looks like a webcam right. nobody wants to see that you know it doesn't come on the air that often but when it does people want to see the slow-mo video with fine fidelity and whatnot and this camera does that uncompressed so do you use a spread spectrum or how do you transmit that 1.5 gigabits well That's no a lot. if the carrier is a high enough frequency like 60 gig it can handle the payload uncompressed so, i mean you're just using like amplitude modulation or exactly. something exactly it, wow. it, it's it's a form of it's on off keying which is a form okay. of amplitude modulation so so there's it's because we're doing that we don't manipulate or encode or compress the video we're just pump, pumping that raw uh, ones and zeros of the of the SDI stream right into the modulator. So it's uh, from a from a uh, signal to noise perspective, you can probably handle a lot of exactly. junk, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and is that what you see in the outdoor applications too? Like if we were to beam something over to that apartment over there? Yeah, exactly, exactly. There, there's an automatic g uh, gain control that can uh, adjust for subtle changes. So, so exactly like uh, you mentioned, you know, about the goal moving. The signal strength will change while that goal is moving, you know, because the beam is not centered in its its sweet spot. So, uh, so uh, the automatic gain control in the receiver adjusts for those subtle changes. What sort of link uh, distances have you uh, achieved uh, using this kind of technology? Uh, Sixty gigs is 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 about a kilometer. Okay. Uh, uh, some of the other frequencies, uh, 70, 80, and 90, you can go about 15, 10, 15 kilometers. But this technology goes about a kilometer. Uh, these you units because we have the wider uh, a 20 degree uh, transmission horn um, uh, they're only designed to go a couple of hundred they could probably go about 300 meters uh, the league only needed about 50 meters or 150 feet uh, Madison Square Garden um, uh, where Minnesota plays uh, it escapes me the name Excel of the venue Center. is it Excel Center yeah Excel power see hockey fans see, yeah. he knows uh, where the wild play yeah. uh, uh, 150 foot ceiling uh, in some of those venues and we handle it no problem well, super. I appreciate your insight into hockey and into uh, 60 gigahertz wireless. Oh, one last thing. Watch more hockey <laughs> and because it's the cup. All right. <laughs> and that's from someone who knows the NHL. So thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you.